Hi, my name is Jason and this is my blog called Living with CMT. I hope you enjoy. Good evening folks. Um, it's nine o'clock on Saturday night. Now, I've been waiting for uh, deliveries and I've been waiting for boxes. I want to let me move this a bit so I'll get a better picture. There you go. I've been waiting for boxes. Now, Deb uh, bought me a box about a week ago and been waiting for it to come and it was supposed to be the Marvel 80th edition collector's box from a company called XS hyphen Merch, M-E-R-C-H. Remember the name. On the picture online, there was a box, a white box, and on it it said Marvel in big letters, and it was lovely design on it, it really was nice. This is what came. Plain white box. It was also advertised as being a limited edition, it was supposed to be a limited edition 80th anniversary collector's item in it. Right, there was inside. I'll show you. Don't get me wrong, the stuff's nice, but it's only worth about what I paid for it. It's nothing special. That there, that's a marvellous Marvel long sleeve shirt, yeah? You can buy it on eBay for £7.20. I know, because I've checked. Alright. Next item. Sorry, my hands aren't functioning very well at all. Is a a t-shirt, a Thanos t-shirt, as you can see, Thanos t-shirt, seven pound twenty again on Amazon. Right. Third item is a Marvel, basically a Marvel drinks cup, about another six quid, six and a half, seven quid. Right. So far, twenty quid, not right. twenty quid. Marvel Avengers Infinity Notepad, another five quid, 25, and the badges, a badge set, Marvel Avengers Infinity badge set, another five, 30 quid, and it was only 30 quid anyway, for the box, there's no designer box, which he's supposed to have had, there's no limited edition 80th anniversary Marvel item, so I've put in a big complaint, uh, I'm waiting here off him now because I've told him if this is all it is, it isn't worth the money. It's false advertising because it's not what he says on the internet. And um, I'm going to see, to be honest with you, if I can get my money back because I think it's a bit disgraceful, really. Yes, it's worth £30, but when you buy a box, you don't expect it to be worth the exact amount you pay. You're supposed to, the, the, the whole point of buying a box is so that you get a bargain. You get something that's, you know, wow, that's worth 50 quid and I've only paid 30 quid for it. I could have bought the items myself separate for 30 quid, so what was the point of having them in a box? Anyway, as you can see, I'm not very happy about that box. So we'll have to see what happens about that. So that was the first thing today. Second thing today, it's another thing that annoyed me actually. I was just talking to my sister on the phone, and I was leaning on the door frame uh, over there by the patio door. And I saw, in the cemetery, Two men walk down the path. Not young men, not like, you know, 50, not 20 or something like that. These must have been 30s, maybe early 30s. And I watched one of them, he was drinking a can of lager. And when he'd finished with it, he threw it into the edges, which are just below our deck in here. And I saw him, and I bawled him out. I shouted to him, excuse me, do you mind picking that up? And he shouted back, you are? I said, do you mind picking that up? I can't do that, it's like needing nettles. I said, that ain't my problem. You've just thrown a can into our hedges at the bottom of our yard. I said, now anybody who walks past going to think we've done that. Going to think we've dropped it over the edge of our, of our uh, the banister thing. I said, so pick it up. No, I'm not doing that. I'll get all nettled. No, 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 no. And off he trundled. And I tell you what, if he does it again, next time I'll have my phone on me because I'm taking a picture. Sorry, but things like that really annoy me. There's no need for it because about 100 yards up the path, there's a bin. And he wouldn't, he didn't obviously think about putting it in there. Oh man, it gets on my nerves. And at the same, well, while I was speaking to my sister, she told me that they have the same sort of problem outside where they live, only it's not with cans, it's with dog fouling. They get to the bottom of their path and go for a walk out onto the pavement, 
And there, bang, right in front of them. Right on the path there where the kids are going to go and everything. And we've told her about a thing. I don't know if you ever heard of it. There's an app on the phone called Pooper Snooper. I don't know whether you know about it. But what it is, is basically you can take a photo of somebody and a photo of them not picking it up, if you like. And you can actually upload it to this site and they keep an eye on them. Because they can get done for it. And I think they should get done for it. Because even though when me and Deb go for a walk with the dog, obviously I can't do anything because I can't bend down and pick anything up. But Deb always picks it up. Always picks it up. No matter rain, sleet, hail, snow, she picks it up. And if she can do it, then anybody can. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, like I said, it's not, it's not been the best day today. We've had a horrible weather. Really horrible weather. Literally plastering it down for most of the day. Um, I've had a bit of a bad low day anyway. I've not been feeling too brilliant. But we have had a Tesco delivery today. And the fantastic thing about it was the Tesco delivery came and everything was there. Now, with us ordering quite a lot of stuff, nearly £100, because we haven't done a big shop for ages, we expected to be a few items missing or replaced or something, you know. And they weren't. And the other fantastic thing about it was everything had brilliant dates on it. At least a week, some three weeks. The yogurts and that i've got three to four weeks on them so we're over the moon with that we really couldn't be happier out there um what else was i going to talk to you about well, something else i was going to say i can't remember what it was. oh yeah um i'm a member of a site called memories of chalif and burzum and it basically covers areas i used to live in in stoke-on-trent and me uh, uh, i saw a post on there talking about um, a man asking if anybody remembers him from chalif blah 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 and all of a sudden, I saw this name mentioned, Kenny Cotton. I thought, that's funny, that's my dad's name. Or what's my, what's my dad's name, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I started reading, and all of a sudden, all these wonderful comments about how brilliant my dad was, and how he's, you know, the people used to love him and his brothers, and, and how they all got on fantastically, and people used to play darts with my dad in the pub, and he was such a wonderful bloke. And it really, really, you know, it made me feel good inside, knowing that my dad was so well-loved. Um, I mean, he's been passed away now 10 years, and... These people were talking about him as if he was still there, you know, and it was really, really nice. It really did make me feel good inside to know that my dad was that well liked and respected by people. And um, I'm hoping at some point, in, well, when I'm gone, that people will remember me the same way because I try not to upset people. I try not to uh, get on the wrong side of people. I try not to antagonize people. And if I do, it's usually by accident. It's usually something I've said where I haven't realized what I've said. I'll give you a quick example, actually. I used to work in a place called Moreland Photo Labs. And uh, we used to get on fantastic. Everybody in there was brilliant. You know, they were the best working years of my life. And when I was there, uh, one of the women hadn't come in on the Friday. And uh, on the following Monday, uh, she came in. And um, I, obviously, me being a jokey self, turned around and said, Oh, no, I saw you. You had Friday off skiving. I said, I suppose you went to the seaside, did you? Dad had an ice cream. And she turned around and she said, no, I actually went to my dad's funeral. And, of course, that was me foot in mouth, wasn't it? I felt like a right plum. I'm telling you, I did not feel good at all that day. Anyway, she just sniggered a little bit and she said, it's all right. You didn't know. I didn't tell anybody why I wanted a day off. She said, so, you know, don't worry about it. She said, but, yeah, the day went OK. And we said goodbye to my dad. And I'm like, bloody hell, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? I was only, what would I have been, 20? 19, 19, 20, I think I was, bloody neck, 26 years ago, yeah, I'd have been about 19 or 20, and uh, so I've done, I've done my fair share of putting, putting my foot in my mouth, trust me, um, and when you do it, you know it's something you can't take back, it's not something you can say, rewind, I won't say it this time, you've already said it, it's too late, and uh, you'd be surprised how many times people will go, oh yeah, I've done that, I've definitely done that, but this site, like I said, this Memories of Bradley, Burzlum and Chally, is fantastic because I've seen people on there that I haven't spoke to for 20-odd years. 30-odd years, some of them, because I left I left Burnwood High School when I was 15. I'm 46 now. Um, and my last year I did, I did actually at a school called Brown Hills. I often wonder, actually, I mean, I, I've spoke to um, a lot of people from uh, Burnwood High School, and it's nice to see a lot of them, to see how they've ended up. Some are married, some aren't married, some have got kids, you know, some are single. It's just weird, you know, when you think about all these people that you used to share the schoolroom with, and, you know, they're all in the 40s now, coming up to 50, some of them, and you're like, wow. 
talk about time flies, but it doesn't seem like 34 years have passed, you know, 30 odd years have passed, sorry. It doesn't seem like 30 odd years have passed. But you just look at it and you go, yeah, they really have, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I did something last night I never thought I would do, actually. I got into a car game. Now, me and car games go together like, what's the best way to describe it? Can you imagine Pavarotti hand gliding? Yeah, that's about me with car games. I have not got the dexterity for car games, but this game's called Forza Horizon 4. Now, when I started off, I thought, I know what's going to happen. In five minutes' time, I'm not going to be able to play it because it's going to tell me I've crashed and blah, 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 knackered my car. But this game, you can actually crash through walls on it and, and go through people's gardens and stuff and hit walls. You get points for doing it. You get recognised for doing it. Yes, you have to take place in events, but you don't have to finish first in them. You can finish 12th and still get fame points and build yourself up. Now, this is ideal for me because I've got all the fun of playing a car game which I do like play, even though I'm absolutely garbage at them, because I can't, I can't, the dexterity in my fingers will not allow me to do a car game, where it's saying go around the corner and quickly press handbrake, I can't even figure out where my fingers are on the controls, I'm just pressing accelerate and controlling it with my thumb, that's all I can do, you know, that, that's my limit, I've gone off the road so many times, but luckily, like I said, this game you actually get rewarded for doing it, which is a nice change. Um, what else did we do today? I'm not really a lot, to be honest with you, because like I said, the weather's been awful. And it's cold. It's really cold for June. I mean, bear in mind, we're on June the 8th, and the temperature's been about 14 degrees. And I think this time last year, we were into as early 20s, maybe 21, 22 last year. I did see a bit of news earlier on. Well, quite a bit of news, actually. But the main story I saw was that next year in the UK, you're on about moving the May bank holiday to VE Day, because May Bank Holiday is usually Monday, all our bank holidays are Mondays, but they're all about moving it back four days to the Friday to celebrate 75 years since victory in Europe, and I think that's an absolutely fantastic idea. I know we'll get the idiots and the pillocks saying, oh, but you're glorifying war, and if you do that kind of thing, you're basically saying war's right, and that you should be, no, forget it, forget it, and, and go and play Call of Duty or something, just go, you know, you seem okay with being able to do things like that, but you tell somebody that you're celebrating, you know, Remembrance Sunday, you know, oh, I'm not wearing a poppy, poppy, no, that's glorifying war, that is. What a load of cobblers. People like that get on my wick, especially when they don't know what they're talking about. You know, you find me a veteran, somebody in the 70s or 80s, who says he won't remember his fallen comrades, you know, the people who died on the beaches, the people who died in, in flipping wars and God knows what, and then I'll, you know, then I'll listen to him. But you get me some little shite who's only been out of school a couple of years telling me that we're glorifying war by Remembrance Sunday and by remembering the people who gave their lives for us. And I would definitely, 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 quite willingly smack them on the nose. Verbally speaking, of course, because I ain't violent. But verbally speaking, I would whack them on the nose because I would just literally tear shreds off them for the next three hours if they want to have a debate about war and remembrance, mate. You give me an argument on it, I'll give you an argument back. Anyway, I don't think we're doing much tomorrow. I'm, I'm looking forward to one thing. I get to watch the um, England women against Scotland women in the World Cup. And I get to see... Uh, sorry, I get to speak to my good friend Sarah Hovell from down in Leicester. Uh, because what used to happen is we used to... When we used to watch England matches, we always used to talk on the phone. Uh, I haven't said much about my CMT. That's because this week's been a bad week for me. A really bad week and I didn't want to bring people down. But I'm, I'm ready to talk about it now. I've had a really, really bad week. I've had bad pains in my spine. I've had bad pains in my side. I've found it hard to concentrate. Uh, my hands have not functioned properly. Um, literally 20 minutes at a time and then I'm literally nothing. I've spent a lot of time feeling quite low because of it. Because of things that I want to do and I can't do. So yes, this week has not been a good day for my conditions. Uh, I think my thyroid's been playing up or something because my nausea was bad, really bad for three or four days this week. So if you're thinking this is called living with CMT and I don't talk about CMT much, that's because it's not primarily about me talking about CMT. It's about me showing you that my life suffering with CMT. And as I've said before, if I only had CMT, then fair enough, I might be okay with that. But I haven't only got CMT. I've got CMT, I've got hypothyroidism, I've got, um, hang on, gastroesophageal reflux disease, 
you know so I've got I've got a few things which all mount up um, I've gone two days without having a sleep in the afternoon which is a miracle and as you can see from the eyes at the moment they look as if I'm about to drop off now but I'm not it's just because I've been up for so long I've been up 12 hours now 12 and a half hours so I'm a bit tired but I thought I'd do a video anyway so uh, that's it for today you all take care and I'll speak to you soon hi i hope you enjoyed the vlog and if you did please give me a thumbs up and a like thank you very much and if you like what you saw you can subscribe by clicking there and if you want to see what i did yesterday you've just got to click up there bye for now